I'm Claire from Lime Lemons East Anglia and here with me today is the lovely Cornelius. Today's session's about snakes. We've got a couple of corn snakes to meet and a milk snake. Now Cornelius is a corn snake. See he looks Cornelius and he is a lovely boy. Very, very friendly. When I take him to schools or parties or care homes, one of the first things I tell everyone is he is not a biting snake. He is not a venomous snake as a corn snake. He, uh, he doesn't have fangs, any venomous snakes have fangs. He is what we would call a constrictor, which means he squeezes his prey. But as you see, he's very, very friendly. He is around 17 years old, so he's quite an old boy. He's been with me for about uh, two and a half years now. And all my snakes have been rehomed with me, which means that they lived somewhere else first, but they needed a new home. Hello, Cornelius. Now, Cornelius, as he's showing you, has a beautiful forked tongue. Can you see it going in and out? Now, all snakes have forked tongues. And you see, he constantly flicks his tongue in and out. And the reason he's doing that, he's scenting the air, he's using his tongue to smell. And when it flicks in and out, what it does, when it goes back into its mouth, he's got an organ at the top of his head here, called the Jacobson organ. And that sends messages to his brain, which lets him know where smells are coming from. So not only does it help him smell, it actually helps him locate where the smell's coming from, which is great when he's hunting. Should we have a look at him on the floor? He's completely entangled on my arm at the moment, aren't you? Do you want to go down, sweetheart? He's got some beautiful patterns. Corn snakes come in a lot of different colours. And Cornelius here, you can see the patterns along his back, are what I would call a saddle back. He's also, actually before he goes down, look at the inside of him. He's got his beautiful piano markings on, the, on his tummy, which are absolutely lovely. So as I said, he is a corn snake, and the reason he's called a corn snake is not because he eats corn. He's called a corn snake because he would live and hunt around the cornfields. He's from North America, and he would go around the cornfields. And the reason he likes to go around the cornfields is because at the cornfields, there are the animals that he does like to eat. He likes to eat rodents, and rodents, like mice and rats, like to eat corn. So you've got this beautiful food chain going on in the cornfields where you have the corn being grown, the rodents, the mice and rats eating the corn, and Cornelius or other corn snakes coming along and eating the mice. Well the food chain doesn't stop here. As a snake he is a carnivore, Cornelius here only eats meat, but he's not the top of his food chain. In the wild, he would have other animals, other what we would call secondary predators or top tier predators that would come and eat him. And this is one here. This is a hawk. They would quite happily eat a nice corn snake. You'd also get coyotes and things like that to try and do a hunt them. So he is not a top predator, but he is a very good predator of the smaller animals he eats, like, like mice and rats. So as a snake, he is a reptile, and you'll see here he's covered in these beautiful, beautiful scales. And these are really tough, and they help him to move. They're so tough, when he goes over rough, rocky terrain, his skin doesn't get marked or scratched because the scales are so tough. When he wants to get bigger, what he would do is take off those scales. He can shed his skin and it all comes off in one big go. I will show you. This here is one of Cornelius' sheds. I don't know if you can see it properly. And you'll see it comes off in one go. And if we look closely at the front, you will see a mouth hole and you will see his eyes because he even loses the skin over his eyes. When he's coming up to molt, he goes really dull in colour. In fact, he only molted last week, so he's looking particularly bright and beautiful at the moment. But he would go very dull colour and grey, and his eyes would go a grey colour. And at that point, you just leave him alone to get on with it. It can take up to around a week. And then one day I will come down and he will be pushing himself out of his old skin and you'll see the lovely new skin.
Here he goes. Can you see the beautiful S shape he moves? He uses when he moves. He pushes himself along with all these muscles here, which is absolutely beautiful. Right, as I said, he is not the only colon snake I'm going to show you today. I'm now going to show you another one so you can see the difference of colours that they come in. So say goodbye to Cornelius and we're going to get the next snake out. I'm just going to put him in the travel tank for the time being. <laughs> Right, here we have the lovely Fire, here she comes. And you will see Fire is a completely different colour to Cornelius, but Fire is also a corn snake. Fire has, is a type of albino, she only has red pigment, which gives her this beautiful orange colour and she's got the red eyes. She's younger. Man, should we see her moving? She's younger than Cornelius. She is coming up to four years old. Hello, sweetheart. And she has been with me for about two years. Corn snakes can live up to around about 25 years in a captivity. In the wild, it would only have to be up to about eight years. So they live a lot longer when they're pets. Because they live so long and because they're they are a very popular pet. They are very, very friendly and they're one of the uh, most popular reptiles with pets. But because they live so long, you do find a lot of these come up for rehoming, which is a shame. There you go. Look at you moving, Fire. So snakes have been around for a really, really long time. Fossils show that prehistoric snakes are actually around at the end of the dinosaurs in the Cretaceous period. And they actually had small hind legs, which is uh, very different from our snakes today, which don't have legs at all. They did used to have legs, but over time they've evolved to lose these legs. Snakes don't burrow, they don't need to dig holes. They normally go under rocks or bark or logs or even go up into trees, but they don't need legs for digging. They think, scientists so think that the reason they've lost their legs is actually it helped the snake conserve energy. They didn't need the legs, they were just kind of in the way for them, taking up energy. So it helps them conserve energy not to have legs. And they move in this beautiful pattern now. You can see fire moving, having a look around. Right, we are going to meet another snake now. We're going to meet a different type of snake. So we're going to say goodbye to the beautiful fire. Can you say goodbye to everyone, fire? Bye-bye. And we are going to meet a milk snake next. Oh, here you come, sweetie. Hello. So this is the lovely Guillermo. And Guillermo is a milk snake. Guillermo is the uh, the newest animal actually to join the lion then is going. I've only had him about two or three months. He's 11 years old. He came to live with me because his owner was uh, very poorly and unable to look after him any longer. But you see, he looks different from the corn snakes. He's got this beautiful orange colour, but he's got these banded markings. Now, milk snakes are from... North and South America, you get them through Central America, Mexico, and then down in sort of Venezuela and Ecuador. Hello, you. And their banded markings are a very, very clever trick. So milk snakes are completely harmless. They're, ve um, they're not venomous either. They're a harmless snake, but they look very similar. Let me show you a picture to these snakes. They look very similar. The difference being, these are coral snakes, and coral snakes are deadly. These are very venomous. And the milk snake here, by looking like a coral snake, puts other animals off, eating them so much. It's a defence mechanism to stop themselves being eaten. They're not huge snakes, as you can see. So this does help them. Unfortunately, because they look like a deadly snake, sometimes humans get it wrong and panic over milk snakes when these ones are absolutely harmless. One of the ways you can tell the difference is you will see if you've got black next to red, 
you're absolutely fine. But if you've got yellow next to red, then you need to watch out. So milk snakes also like to eat rodents. Hello. You will see the muscles that Guillermo uses to hold himself up as he comes round. These are all very pretty snakes. They've got quite pretty faces, I think. Hello. Right, there we go. So they are the three snakes we are meeting today. Just to let you know, um, next week we are changing things around a bit. This week we're going to carry on meeting a different animal each day. And then, hello, you going up my sleeve. Next week we're going to change it around a bit and we are going to start doing some more lesson-based things. So we're going to start with classif animal classification. Each day next week we will either meet mammals or reptiles, birds, amphibians and invertebrates. So each day there will be a different animal classification group. And I hope you enjoyed meeting the snakes. We'll see you again at Animal Camp tomorrow. Bye.